So I think what I will do is turn immediately to Victor, whose name has been uh, quoted and taken in vain uh, during the course of the, the morning uh, presentations, uh, and uh, get his um, very short, brief insight into uh, where he and his organization stands, and then invite a, a bit of questioning and indeed comment from the floor. Thank you very much, um, and it has been a pleasure to uh, listen to the two representatives from European Parliament and, and their optimism expressed by them. We are going to need that, I think, in, in the European Council. Um, so, so I hope you will have time one day to appear at the European Council and give them sort of some, just a little bit of your optimism would help a lot. Um, I'm, I'm not so much going to speak about Denmark and the Danish experience, but uh, actually trying to say a bit about the, the council position on this. Uh, and the first thing saying, of course, there is no council position as yet. Uh, there has been no meetings on this as yet. And uh, of course, the proposal is quite recent. But I can say a little thing about you know, the political situation uh, that the council will have to face. And on the one hand, I think it is very important, as mentioned by the two uh, European Parliament representatives, that we are not dealing with this in a void. There is a huge global activity in this area right now, and it was mentioned by, by Mr. Howard that you have, you know, the, the Rio summit, uh, where one of the outcomes, uh, one of the conclusions in the outcome document was that governments should in fact promote sustainability reporting as a key element of a more sustainable society. We have the UN guidelines on business and human rights also encouraging governments to promote um, sustainable or rather reporting on human rights of course. Um, we have the GRI as mentioned by Mr. Howard where uh, uh, 600 re representatives from business all over the world said that this should be placed high on the agenda. And we also have the revised OECD guidelines. So, you know, uh, whether the, commission, the Council uh, decides to support the Commission proposal or not, you cannot just say we're not going to make a decision. You are making a decision. Either you're opting out or you're opting in. Either you're saying Europe should be a leader in the global development, taking into account the values that we have all committed to in the European uh, treat in the uh, Treaty of the European Union, uh, or saying that we cannot afford this due to the crisis, economic crisis we currently experience in the European Union. And I think those two opposites will be clashing in the discussions in the Council. And as to the last part, last part the, the economic crisis in the European Union, I think for many European politicians, this is a desperate thing right now. You know, we are seeing in the streets of Europe thousands of thousands of young people going around without finding a job. We see thousands of middle-income people losing their jobs, losing their houses. So many politicians are thinking what we need right now is growth. It is lower cost, it's not more cost than European business. And you will easily see the Commission proposal in that perspective as something that should not be promoted because it will increase cost, it will make European business less competitive. So that, I think, will be a key issue in the Council discussions. I personally, and based on the Danish experience, believe the assumptions are wrong. We, we really think short-term and we forget so quickly as human beings what actually placed us in the current mess was not lack of growth, but the wrong kind of growth. It was short-term, very fragile, uh, profit-seeking, and not long-term responsible growth. Now, if we try to cure our, the, our illness just now by having more short-term growth, we will end up in the same mess we, we, came, we came in now. We need a different kind of growth, and, and we believe that, uh, that you know, encouraging this kind of reporting can be part of encouraging a mindset in companies to focus on long-term growth. Uh, which will really improve the prospects for, for all citizens in the European Union. But that will be the difficult discussion in the Council. Fortunately, we have experiences to draw on. You know, we're not discussing something theoretical. There are two important points here, I think. The first thing is, 
This is one of the best and more, most thoroughly prepared commission proposals I have ever seen. Uh, and just to mention a few things, I would mention the uh, series of workshops held by the European Commission 2009-2010, where each and every aspect uh, of uh, sustainability and CSR reporting were investigated, and all stakeholders had ample opportunity to voice their concerns and their views. So we really have a very, very clear picture of different views, different concerns, information necessary to take a position. That, I think is important. And then, as I said, we have had a number of member countries of the European Union which we can draw on a sort of a laboratory uh, results on how different approaches to reporting work in practice, how it affects company uh, competitiveness. So we, we have a lot of knowledge we can bring to the discussions in the Council. Uh, so I think that is going to help us. And I know if France, uh, the Netherlands, Sweden, and we ourselves in Denmark will be readily uh, ready to make available all the information that can help other countries to, to make the, a, a decision on this. But it will be difficult discussions and they will focus on whether this proposal will actually um, make European business more competitive or less competitive. Victor, Victor, Thank can you. I just, can I just interrupt you for a second and ask you, what is the split in the Council? I mean, in the sense of, what are we talking about? 60-40, 50-50, 40-60? I mean, roughly speaking, how difficult is this going to be to get... Uh, the, re the requisite number of votes on this particular... No, question. I will not give you a specific uh, count of votes, but I would say perhaps... Just give me a broad, a broad yeah, yeah, I would uh, say, I would say sense of Perhaps one third will be more or less positive about the proposal, one third will be more or less neutral, and one third will start off being uh, utterly against it. So more or less neutral means also against, does it? I think that they, okay. it's a group of countries that could go either way uh, according to the negotiations. But one thing I will say is the first thing necessary to make this happen is to negotiations to actually start up. And, you know, we are in the uh, more or less final stages of the Irish presidency, and I don't think they will have time to do much more than perhaps present the Commission proposal and have a first uh, discussion on it. And then afterwards we have the Lithuanian presidency, and I, I don't know of if they have at this stage decided how high to put this proposal on the agenda. So that is also a an, an factor of uncertainty. Thank you.